We're just about to enter the Wasatch Reptile Expo. Let's see what we uh, find. Hi, Russ of Aquarimax here. Well, let me show you what I ended up picking up at the Expo. So my first acquisition is this double-decker PVC enclosure. I had it built so it would fit into my uh, metal frame shelves, and it was built by Justin of KMB Customs. I'll put a link to his uh, Facebook page and so on. He had just moved and so it took a little while for us to get uh, together to get the final touches which were the glass but at the expo he was there and we, he was able to deliver the glass for me so I'm really excited for this for a lot of reasons. One, it's going to provide more space for Mr. Skeletal or Corn Snake. It's got, uh, it's deeper from front to back, it's longer from side to side, so it's just going to give them a little more space there, but it's also two stories, so I have space for another snake, which I'm really excited about. And I have my eye on a couple of different species, uh, but I won't spoil the surprise for that. But anyway, really excited for um, this new enclosure to move our corn snake into it and then to have space for another snake eventually. So, you know, I was actually really close to picking up an African house snake while I was at the expo. It's a species I've been looking at for a while and I would like to keep. I was about 97% ready for it, meaning I had everything I needed to take care of it at home. Uh, I had an enclosure and everything, but the enclosure wasn't really set up. And so I didn't really want to do an impulse buy. And I feel like, you know, maybe it's not quite the right time for one just yet, but that's something I'll keep in mind for the future. So now let's look at the other livestock that I picked up at the show. Okay, everyone, here's the first one. These came from Nocturnal Exotics at the Expo. And uh, I've already checked on them a little bit. Let's see what we can see here. There's a little wee one. I purchased some little juveniles because I want them to be... Basically the purpose of these, because I do have my uh, rubber duckies breeding, some of which actually came from Damien already at Nocturnal Exotics. and. Uh, I just want to deepen the gene pool a little bit. So I picked some up that are going to be close in size and age to the young ones that I have. And you know, this one is getting not too far away from breeding age right there. But some of the others are a little smaller. There's one of them in the cup. And just have to find that other one. There's one right there. running running away okay and then there's the last one right there still not out of the cup yet <laughs> it's oh, there we go keeps sticking to the cup there we go all right so I'm gonna put this back in here because you never throw that kind of stuff away just in case until you've gone over it with a fine tooth comb. There we go. So that was a nice little purchase. It's nice to see Damien again too at the show. He's got some cool stuff you should check out his site. One thing that I really liked that he had was uh, silicone gecko feeding cups so you could wash them instead of throwing them away, which I thought was awesome. Okay, this next group now, it says Porcelio Hausai there, but that's not true. You can see Ornatus is written in there. So we've got some high yellow um, Porcelio Ornatus. Now, I already have this species, but as you may have heard, I recently got some. Uh, actually, Jordan sent them to me, which is awesome. But I had a little bit of die-off. I didn't lose all of them. There's still, you know, there's still a number of them in here. There's one right there. And they're doing okay now, and... Hopefully I won't have any more die-off, but I figured I want as deep a gene pool as possible. So I purchased five more. So let's check it out. And these are one of my favorite of the um, Porcelio ornatus, probably my favorite Porcelio ornatus. Uh, it's trying to chew on me, I think. I can feel, yep, it's trying to, they do that. They're kind of a protein-hungry isopod. They like fish food and stuff like that. Porcelio ornatus yellow dot really, really get into that. Um, but it, apparently these do too. So 
I've been making sure to add plenty of wood and things like that uh, in different areas with the concave um, cork bark to make sure that they can regulate their own humidity needs and hopefully that will take care of it and we'll get these breeding. Uh, according to Oren's book, I'll put a, a link to Oren's book in the description, Isopod Zoology, he said this morph is a little bit susceptible to sudden unexplained die-offs. He says you can keep uh, you can keep two different uh, groups of them in the same exact conditions and one one group will have like a, a crash and the other one won't. So oh, drop that one. And I think we're up to five now. Here's our fifth one. These are great. You know, the chocolate high yellow morph is a nice morph. That's not focusing for us. We're trying, but oh, there it goes. Very nice. But I, I really prefer the uh, this morph, just the, the high yellow, where there's not uh, not a lot of the chocolate color. Um, chocolate color is cool. I like it, but I, I just like the higher contrast provided by this one. And I'm going to put all this moss in here, of course, in case there's you know something I missed. There could be some tiny ones, even the paper towel. Just it's all going in, just in case there's something I missed, like tiny babies or whatever. So there we go. Okay, this next one is a species I have already, but a morph that I do not have, and I'm pretty excited about it. It's Porcelia Levis California mix. So this particular morph is one of the fascinating isopod morphs that's quite variable. Individuals look quite a bit different from each other, even though they're part of the same morph, which I really like. And I think there's a lot of potential in this morph should be more common. Like you see this one here, it looks almost like a wild type, but it's got some white edging down near the the uropods. I'm trying to catch a, see if I can focus on it. Maybe lift it up a little bit. Let's see if we can do that. Yeah, there we go. You can see there's a little bit of white edging, which is cool. And of course, Porcelia Levis include milk backs and dairy cows, orange. They have the caramel morph. There's some other cool morphs that are appearing. There's a, a really light colored one, if we can get a focus on that. Um, so light one with a dark head there. Let's see, as I pull this moss out, see what else we can see. Some are going to be sticking in the moss. And uh, see, look at that. Look at the variety there. We've got some mostly wild type ones, some that are almost white, some that are kind of a a peachy pale color, a lot of things going on. One of them looks just like a milk bag. See that one in the bottom right corner of the, the deli cup? Looks almost just like a pale milk bag. But then the one right next to it is almost white, then we have some wild types, and pretty cool. And I'm thinking it would be interesting to make a party mix where you put milk bags, dairy cows, California mix, and oranges all together and see what happens. That could be really cool. Not that I would do it with this group. I'd keep this group true breeding as California mix, but I might set up another bin and see if I can get those others to cross in. I don't think all of them will cross uh, successfully, but some of them might, especially the oranges could conceivably crossbreed with these. So let's take a little look at that. Oh, those are, those are pretty cool. I like that. Like I said, one of my favorite species. Now this one's pretty exciting. Maybe you can already see some of them. Oreo crumble porcelionides prunosus. So I have three of these already. I have the wild types, the powder blues. I have the powder oranges. I've got the white outs, but these I've been wanting for a long time. And I, I hear the name comes from the fact that the originator of the strain, the one who isolated it, allowed a child to name it, which is kind of cool. But as you see, they do kind of have a sort of cookies and cream look to them. When you can see them close up, especially. One thing I love about this species is that they're not very shy. Tend to be out and about doing things. You don't necessarily have to look for them. I've seen enclosures that are brightly lit where they're out. This, this species, not necessarily this morph, uh, exclusively this morph, but they're just out and about doing their thing and when it's uh, well lit. And I really like the, the pattern. And I have, besides the morphs that I just spoke about, I have 
basically the party mix, which is the wild types, the oranges, and the whites all together. And I think eventually when I have enough of these, it would be fun to try to produce some orange Oreo crumbles. I don't, I'm not sure what you'd call those. Um, orange juices. I don't know what you call them. But uh, do something like that, but also put some of these in a party mix, and I think that would be pretty cool. And I got a decent number of these. There, there are 20 of them in here, 20 adults. And likely enough, there's a little bit of an overcount. So these should be breeding very prolifically and very f uh, soon for me because it looks like most of these are already reproductive age, if not all of them. I love the variability there. That one looks kind of like a milk bag, actually. And, uh, yeah, very cool. Okay, here we go. I'm going to... Gonna release these, these little beauties. And there's one right there. Before I go any further, I wanna give a shout out to our supporters on Patreon. Thank you for making so much possible. Our channel has been growing and that's in large part due to you and to all of the others who have supported our channel in one way or another. There are a lot of you and I really want to express my gratitude to everyone. Okay, these are a locality I don't have. I have the species, but not the locality. Dubrovnik red face. So this is a species that is often said to mimic relatives of black widow, so species in the black widow family. And um, that may be true, but uh, I don't know how much you know research has been done on that, but... These are some pretty cool specimens here. This particular morph has uh, more red in it than a lot of the others of this species. So I'm pretty excited about these guys. And I believe these do not have the uh, yellow spots that the Montenegro locality has. It's always white. So they've got the white spots on the red background, which is Pretty fantastic. And there should be a good number of them in here. So let's take them out and see what we can see. There's one. Now like their, the others of their species, they like a good humidity gradient. So you want a, a mossy spot, or a hydration station, as I like to call it sometimes, just for fun. And you also want some very dry areas in the enclosure, so you can see I've created a humidity gradient with the moss on this side, very damp over here, Then I've got some cork bark hides that they can use that are close to it, and then I've got another cork bark hide back here where it's quite dry over the leaves, and they usually find the spot that they want. I often find my other Montenegros will hang out in the wood near the moss, but not actually like to go in the moss a whole lot. So this may or may not be how these behave. They are a species that requires a decent amount of ventilation too. So I've got a lot of ventilation holes in the lid and in the sides to make sure that they can take advantage of that. Cosmo's interested in them. I bet he is. He likes to watch all the critters climb around. Mm -hmm. He gets plenty of cat TV. Yep, he likes to watch, especially the leopard gecko. Mm -hmm. It's one of his favorite ones to watch. Actually, the geckos are his favorites. Oh, I just had a piece of moss fly. And, and the frogs. Yeah, when the frogs are like out eating or something, that gets him going. Fortunately, he doesn't really like to watch the bird all that much. He still go after birds outside, but he learned the difference between inside birds and outside birds. Fortunately for the bird. Mm -hmm. Look at all those. Super cool. Very excited for these. Hopefully they do really, really well. This is a really good time to pick up isopods. One, the uh, season is pretty mild weather-wise, so it's not too cold, not too hot, and so I'm getting isopods shipped in and things like that. I'm trying to build up my collection in terms of isopods that I can 
breed and ship out to people. I have permits now for all states except for Hawaii and Florida, and I'm working on Florida, almost have that one done. So um, that's kind of exciting, and I'm trying to build up species and morphs that I can ship out. And it's just kind of an exciting time for me in terms of isopods that I'm bringing into my collection. Thanks for watching today. I post videos every Tuesday and Friday, all on aquarium and vivarium pets. Please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then click the bell icon so you don't miss my next video.